So, has the government done enough to stop the spread of Ebola? Joining us now, Republican Congressman Tim Murphy, chair of the oversight panel that held a hearing this week that criticized the administration response. And Michael Osterholm, director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Congressman Murphy, your initial reaction to the appointment of Ron Klain as the Ebola czar was that it was, quote, shocking and tone deaf. Have you heard anything since then to change your mind, sir? No, I mean, the American people are looking for someone with some knowledge and expertise. He has none in these fields. Uh, and I, uh, throughout this whole thing, given the number of missteps and promises and reassurances the CDC has given, everything from we have uh, plenty of hospitals, the gowning was fine, the way it was initially, uh, fever, uh, can I identify someone, you only use 100.4. So many of those reassurances have not been accurate. What the people want is uh, as much facts as possible, don't overpromise, don't be certain when you're not certain, but the key is to protect and defend the people of the United States. The way the CDC is coming out now and saying things like, well, you know, so far no one has come in. Well, this is like dealing with terrorism. We have to be right 100% of the time, and Ebola only has to get in once. And that's what's happened so far. So I, I don't think that these uh, false assurances are working. You know, my background is not medicine, it's psychology. And I know what creates panic. And what creates panic is when people are given information that proves to be false. So we need to stop these over-certainties from these medical folks. And uh, I'm not sure that a czar that has no background can help that. Right. I, I want to pick up on that with you, Mr. Osterholm. You heard my discussion with Dr. Fauci about all the misstatements from the government. You say one of the biggest problems is that we have been too confident, too certain in what we have been telling, what the government has been telling the American people. Well, first of all, we do know a lot about Ebola, and I agree wholeheartedly we will not have a community-wide outbreak in this country. Uh, we surely didn't get it right in Dallas as we could have and should have, uh, and frankly, if it had happened in a lot of other places, we probably wouldn't have gotten it right the first time. But I think we've learned a lot in the past two weeks, and what we really need to focus on and keep our eye on the ball is not this country. While I'm concerned about what happens in this country, what I'm really concerned about is what happens in Africa, because as long as that infectious disease forest fire is burning, those embers are going to keep coming around the world, regardless whether they close borders or not. I, I, I want to talk about, though, the threat from those countries, the hot zone, to this country, because one of the big issues, of course, is this idea of the travel ban, and I want to talk to Congressman Murphy about it, uh, the idea of a travel ban from those three countries to uh, the United States. Uh, Congressman Murphy, this is what President Obama said this week. Trying to seal off an entire region of the world, if that were even possible, could actually make the situation worse. Congressman Murphy, why is the president wrong? Well, uh, look, first of all, the president has sealed off Israel in the past, and we've sealed off other areas temporarily. We can have travel restrictions until we get the rest right, and the rest is not right. The assumptions that they have, for example, that it will lead to some uh, collapse of this uh, economy in Africa, I, I don't agree with. The idea we can't get goods and supplies, and that's totally false. We shipped hundreds of thousands of tons of supplies into Germany during the Berlin airlift. And the idea that people are not going to travel unless we put on a ban is absurd. People are already migrating and, and moving all over Africa now uh, for jobs and, and uh, temporary work. They do that now. We can trace passports. We can look at things. But this idea of only using fever scans and asking people to be honest, we know that those are two more assumptions that the CDC has that are not true. And, we, and if you're going to restore faith to the American people and stop panic, right. you've got to be more accurate here. Well, let me bring in uh, Mr. Osterholm, because as I discussed with, with Dr. Fauci, uh, the fact is that a number, I think two dozen African nations have restricted travel from the so hot zone, which raises the question, should we? Well, first of all, let's be clear. Just because somebody takes an action doesn't mean it's right. I believe that Congressman Murphy is well-intended in his uh, assessment here, and, and surely it makes some sense. But we've actually looked at this issue quite closely over the years, and you've already led this program with saying that I've been critical of our response, and I am about how slow we have been to respond in Africa. I would have no problem saying that the thing to do is close the border if we could really protect 
this country from what's happening over there. That's just not the case. And this is not a partisan issue, and it shouldn't be a partisan issue. Just this past week, uh, former Secretary uh, Mike Levitt of HHS under the Bush administration, somebody I very much respect and admire, himself came out and said from his own experience, having been at HHS and reviewing but Mr. all the information why? available. Why, why, is, why is a travel ban a bad idea? Well, the travel ban is a bad idea in part because of the fact that we really don't effectively stop people from getting into this country. And for what? I mean, and what I'm talking about here is we've had one single case so far in the big picture of what the situation is. Maybe we stop another one and two more. But we do know that travel bans will seriously impact our ability to get people in and out of, of that area. And, Congressman, with all due respect, I agree with you on the Berlin airlift. But that was all military. If you're prepared today to give us hundreds of military planes that will fly in and out at will when we need them to move uh, not only material but also people, uh, when we move them around, then I'll say, well, maybe we ought to reconsider this. But I don't see anybody in Congress right. telling us today that we're going to get hundreds of military planes. Congressman Murphy? Well, I, I've already asked uh, Dr. Frieden and uh, sent a letter to President Obama saying, tell us whatever Congress needs to authorize. We're sending thousands of troops over there uh, through, through ships, uh, through, uh, through also planes. We could do a lot here. I mean, the, the ability of the U.S. military to move goods and supplies is pretty massive. We all want to stop Ebola in Africa, but we also don't want it to come here. And even if people talk about, well, one... You know, it means a lot to the family of someone who dies in the United States, and it means a lot to the safety and security of Americans. And so let's focus on concentrating our efforts to stop it in Africa, but let's also make sure that we're protecting America's borders from it coming in here, too. All right, finally, 